Well, we ended up here. And so far we've discussed carbohydrates and fats, lipids, as well as proteins. Now, we're gonna talk about nucleic acids. Nucleic acids mostly are genetic material. Now, are they all found in chromosomes? No, right? But they are genetic material, we're going to be talking about them. Uh, there is a form of nucleic acid called DNA. And by the way, here, let's just do this. Uh, DNA is one important nucleic acid and RNA is the other nucleic acid. And not for nothing, but the N and the A in these two abbreviations actually stands for nucleic acid, right? So we're gonna be talking about them. DNA is probably a little more famous than RNA. DNA forms our genes, which is important. Oh, you should know this. It's important because it stores the information for protein synthesis. When we say that you have got a gene for musical talent, okay, then what we are implying is that in your DNA, which is a component of your chromosome, there is a segment of DNA that has the instructions for building a protein that when that protein is utilized by your body, it gives you musical talent. I, I don't really know if there is a gene for that. I think there is one for perfect pitch, but I'm not even sure of that, okay? Now, these guys, particularly DNA, is an enormous polymer. Enormous. Now, so far when we've been talking about proteins, proteins are very large polymers. Um, a, a, a protein can be made up of hundreds of amino acids, amino acids being the monomer that proteins are made out of. But nucleic acids like DNA are made out of millions of the monomers. They are enormous. And for those of you who might... Uh, take a bio uh, 200 level class, uh, you actually will do a lab where you can see this stuff that is DNA. Pretty cool. Right? Now, nucleic acids are made out of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. That's like a protein, but they also require phosphorus. Now, someday, uh, long down the road, when we're talking about um, how the kidney manages stuff, uh, I may ask you, where is uh, phosphorus used in your body? And you should know that every one of the monomers that build up your uh, DNA or RNA needs a phosphorus in it. The, oops, here's a typo. The uh, polymer that is DNA is made up of, I hate these things. Um, the polymer that is DNA is made up of monomers that are called nucleotides, nucleotides, right? And every nucleotide is made out of a phosphate group, a sugar, and a base. The phosphate group is the same for DNA and RNA. The sugar is different for DNA and RNA. And the nitrogenous bases there's some overlap between DNA and RNA, okay? Nucleic acid molecules like DNA are chains of nucleotides. That's what we mean when we say that DNA is a polymer of monomers of nucleotides. So nucleic acid, they're our genetic material. And DNA is organized into a structure called the double helix. The double helix, a helix is a spring kind of shape or a spiral. A double helix is two of these springs wrapped around each other. You need to know that every molecule of DNA is made out of two different strands of DNA. So here, let me, let me grab a pen here. Here, we've got one strand of DNA on this side, we'll call this the left one. 
it'll make sense in a second why I'm calling it the left one instead of calling it the top one. And here, this one's going to be the right one. Two different strands. Now, the two strands are wrapped around each other and they are attached, um, the two strands are attached in the center by hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases. Okay. So that's DNA. RNA, RNA is also made out of nucleotides. RNA is also, you know, a relatively long strand, not millions of nucleotides long, but you know, hundreds often. And DNA is a single strand instead of being this double helix single strand. However, interactions between the nitrogenous bases of this single strand of RNA will also create structure. So remember how proteins have structure because of the interactions between the side groups of the um, of the amino acids? Well, RNA has structure in that same way. So this is your basic DNA nucleotide. Remember, nucleotides are the monomers that make up nucleic acids. And this is a DNA nucleotide. How do I know that? Because the D in DNA stands for deoxyribose. New DNA nucleotides have the sugar deoxyribose. And that's where the name comes from, deoxyribonucleic acid, deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, these particular um, nucleotides for DNA have got a phosphate group and a sugar group, and the sugar is deoxyribose for DNA. And then hanging off to one side is a nitrogenous base, which is very often just referred to as a base. For DNA, there are four bases, and those four bases are G, A, T, and C. Why did I say them out of order? Well, because a long time ago, there was a movie called Gattaca. I don't know how they spelled Gattaca in the movie, but there was a movie called Gattaca. Gattaca starred um, Uma Thurman and Jude Law and Uma Thurman's husband, Ethan Hawke, back when they were your age and they were adorable. And the movie Gattaca was about a science fiction future where your DNA was your destiny. Did you want to get hired by Apple or whatever it was? They would take a sample of your DNA to decide. And uh, that was the basis for the movie. And so they called the movie Gattaca because if you look at a strand of DNA, and I've got some examples of that for you to look at later, but if you, if you look at a strand of DNA, it's lots of G's and A's and T's and C's. Okay? Um, now, the phosphate and the sugar, they are organized to make up what we often describe as the backbone of the DNA. So let's go back here. If I were to look more closely, I would find phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, making up the backbone. Uh, they're joined together covalently to make up the backbone. And then the nitrogenous base is hanging off towards the middle of this DNA double helix, right? Phosphate sugar base. The sugar for DNA is deoxyribose, and the bases are G, A, T, and C. Now, uh, that's all we're going to talk about when we're just talking about the biomolecules, because right now we're going to start talking about how DNA is organized in your cells and how it is used as the template for making proteins. Your cells make proteins by a process called translation, and the instructions for building the proteins are your genes, and genes are found in your chromosomes, and your chromosomes are made out of DNA, 
and protein because proteins do everything. Now, I think it is very, very useful when you're studying this uh, concept called molecular biology to think of why this system was quote unquote invented by life. Why did we need a system like this? So uh, let's just go to a blank screen. Blank, right? Let's go to a blank screen and let's talk about the problem. The problem life has is that in order to be alive, it needs, oops, in order to be alive, life needs proteins, right? In order to be alive, life needs proteins. And those proteins have got a certain shape, right? We said that was structure or conformation, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. And its shape is determined by the sequence of amino acids. Cool that, right? So if any cell wants to be alive, it needs all of these machines that are called proteins to be doing their things. They can only do their thing if they've got the right shape. They will only have the right shape if the sequence of amino acids is proper. Great. Now, let's just imagine that any individual cell has got all of the proper proteins. But that cell needs to divide into two cells. Well, how's it going to do that? How's it going to divide and make sure that the two resulting cells have all of the right proteins? There are a few ways that you could manage it, quite frankly. But uh, the way life has solved this problem is by storing the information for how to make a protein in the form of DNA. Now, why? Because DNA is easy to copy quickly, and it's easy to make perfect copies. Perfect copies are important because if I am, if I am a cell, and if I'm like, okay, I'm going to divide into two cells, and I need to give a copy of the instructions for how to make these proteins to the cell that I'm about to make, um, if I don't make those instruction copies perfectly, then the cell that results from cell division will have imperfect copies that make proteins that don't work, and then they'll die. So when you uh, started out in life, you started out as a single cell, and you had a single copy of all of the chromosomes from your mom and a single copy of chromosomes from your dad, and that's what you started out with. And over the time that you've been alive, that information for how to build all these proteins has been copied a trillion times. Okay, you're, you're probably 10 trillion cells big and many of the cells that were, yeah, probably more than a trillion times, right? If there was even a one in a million mistake, one in, one million mistakes in making those copies, you'd have more than a million mistakes in your DNA. Mistakes in DNA are called uh, mutations, and mutations will often mess up the protein that results, and you'd either be dead or you'd have cancer, okay? So life needed to develop a system that would allow these instructions that allow us to build proteins to be made easily and to make perfect copies, okay? We will start out how life solved that problem at the beginning of the next lecture.